what I think of any asset protection, creditor protection, uh, and people who've heard me speak have heard me say this, I think of it as layers of an onion. So the mm. first layer should be, be a good steward of your property. And if I, as the manager of the LLC said, said, Hey, you know what? This LLC is having a capital call and all members need to kick in a hundred thousand dollars to pay for operations. Guess what? That creditor needs to pony up a hundred thousand dollars because they stepped, step, uh, stepped into my shoes for benefits and burdens. So creditors don't like it. They're always looking for a way around it. And the only way they usually can get around that is if you have either not set up your LLC properly or you have not managed it properly. You've commingled your money with your personal stuff. You haven't adequately capitalized your LLC, meaning you haven't funded it enough, things like that. But if it's set up properly, managed properly, then it tends to have a good creditor protection um, veil that a land trust will never have. Land trust just counts on smoke and mirrors and hey, hey, you can't find me. But if you find, yeah, right. find you, you know, they got you, right? So if you use a land trust, by the way, the benefits of it are you can do a lot of deals with a lot of flexibility and you can move fast because you're not setting up 100 LLCs. You're not having to deal with the state. You're not paying all the fees. Uh, so you can move fast and you have a lot of flexibility. You lose some creditor protection. But one thing everybody should do if they use a land trust is never name themselves as an individual beneficiary of that mm -hmm. land trust. The beneficiary should always be their LLC or maybe it's a, a personal property trust. And then that beneficiary is an LLC, you know, stack up your layers to make it harder and harder for a creditor to pierce that smoke screen to find you. Right. Do you, I don't sense. know if our viewers know how much people have paid for that information that you just shared. <laughs> See, that's, that's what I, I learned. Yeah. I learned yeah. that today. Yeah. I had no idea that it was yeah. for the burdens as well as the benefit. Right. Well, my wow. hourly rate when I do consulting now is $500 an hour. So how many minutes was that? How much? <laughs> how much is that? <laughs> but the real value is how much money did I just save you? That's exactly <laughs> what my hourly rate right. is, but exactly. what did I save you in litigation costs and everything else? So that's really what you look at. Exactly. That's exactly, exactly right. right. Unfortunately, yeah. a lot of people don't look at things that way. Right. I was always under the impression that the the land trust is basically a way to keep the ambulance chasers from pursuing you because it's too much trouble. Uh, that, and they that, would just move yeah. on to, you know, uh, lower, lower hanging, hanging fruit. fruit. Right. Yeah. That's what I was going to say, as our buddy Jeff Watson says all the time, you know, plaintiff's attorneys are looking for low hanging fruit. And so the more difficult you make it for them to find you and the hoops to jump through, the less likely they are to pursue a lawsuit. So that's what I mean by smokescreen. You make it harder, but the entity, the trust itself does not provide any actual creditor protection by law. It just makes mm -hmm. it harder. Um, but what I, what I think of any asset protection, creditor protection, uh, and people who've heard me speak have heard me say this, I think of it as layers of an onion. So the mm. first layer should be, be a good steward of your property. You know, keep the common areas well lit, keep the ice off the sidewalk, make sure the electrical wiring is not frayed. You know, all the things that make you a good landlord, for instance. Fill in the, fill in the swimming pool. <laughs> right, that kind of thing. Keep, reduce your liability by being a good steward of the property. The second layer of the onion is to have the best insurance you can afford because mm. those, those uh, plaintiff's lawyers who like the low hanging fruit, the easiest thing for them to do is go after a good insurance policy and keep you out of it. And your insurance uh, company defends you. And on that vein, not only the best insurance you can afford, but you've got to make sure it's the right type of coverage and the right amount of coverage. So if you've got a vacation rental, you need a different insurance than somebody that's just a landlord on a single family rental. If it's a commercial policy, it's different. If it's a, a rehab, it's different policy. If it's a vacant single family rental, it's a different policy. So you've got to talk to your insurance people and make sure you've got the right type of policy for your situation. You've got an adequate amount of coverage, and then you probably should have an umbrella policy that's cheap to get, but that covers things that your other policy might not cover, e excess coverage kind of policy. So, and then the third layer of the onion becomes entities, trusts, LLCs, things like that. <laughs>